Hey guys, Naked Reptiles here. Today I just wanted to do a quick video, um, kind of the update on my little rack system that I have here, um, and just kind of let you guys know kind of what has changed since the last time I've done like an update video. Uh, but yeah, let's get started. Um, so right here is still my uh, corn snake. I think you guys saw him in my, <laughs> there he is, in my isopod video. He kind of pokes his little head out and says hi. Um, there he is. He's my oldest snake. I've had him probably about nine, ten years maybe now. Gee, saying that out loud is just like kind of shocking. But yeah, that's him. Um, I've had him since he was a little tiny baby, but... Yeah, this is his enclosure. I'm gonna leave that open and see if maybe he'll wanna come out. I just fed them about two days ago, so they were probably feeling a little lethargic, but yeah, he's um, kind of on a mix of like eco-earth and kind of uh, coconut husk, you know, larger shredded pieces and stuff, and um, this is the Exoterra tank. I don't know the dimensions exactly, but it works really good. We have some live plants in there. I think that's mother-in-law's tongue or snake plant or I don't know the scientific name, but got that like Lowe's Home Depot, really cheap. There's also a couple of pieces of spider plant in there, which he loves to kind of go underneath and lay out there. And yeah, there's also some uh, isopods and springtails in here, trying to help clean up his tank as much as possible. Again, this tank is really heavy, so I don't want to be lifting it you know, once a month. If I can do that maybe once every three months or so, that'd be great. So I kind of keep those guys in there to help me out with that. But uh, yeah, he's um, he's doing really well. Again, I just fed him, so he's probably really lethargic, but there he is. Chilling out under this piece of cork. He's like, what are you doing? Leave me alone. He's really cute, really sweet. Never bit me once. Corn snakes are you know, probably the best beginner snake out there, hands down. You know, they're more exciting than ball pythons, but still kind of have that ease of care like they do. And yeah, so that's his little <coughs> tank there. And again, there's my isopod culture in there. I don't know if you can see any of them in there. Maybe, yeah, you can see a few of them out there right now. Um, so that's kind of the first rack, the, <coughs> the very, very first rack here. Is just has some pothos on it and kind of some uh, sheds that I've kept, little craft thing from the fair and stuff. But yeah, kind of have those pothos vines vining down, kind of makes it look a little bit cooler, kind of, you know, purifies the air, if you will. <laughs> but yeah, so I have down here, I have a little baby um, Aniri corn snake um, in the back there. I don't know if he'll come out. But yeah, I've had him now for probably maybe four months, six months maybe, um, in this little tiny uh, terrarium. And again, another kind of bioactive setup. I got the hydroton down here, Eco Earth here. Um, really uh, quick tip for you guys on snake enclosures. If you're gonna do bioactive, don't do the hydroton layer or the drainage layer down here. Just be sparing when it comes to watering the plants because he doesn't like to do it, but you'll see soon that my king snakes love to kind of get underneath this flap of um, mesh right here and get into the hydroton and then they never come out and sometimes they can't get out. So um, yeah, there's a tip for you guys. If you guys are doing a bioactive setup for snakes, I would skip out on the hydroton and just be kind of um, sparing when it comes to water and stuff. But yeah, there he is back there. He's a little baby. So uh, yeah, can't wait to see how how big he gets when, or you know, when he gets this big, like this big guy up here. <coughs> Sorry, my throat's a little scratchy, but um, yeah, he's got some cork hides right there, some manzanita branches. Um, a little rock there, there's some more cork back there. Again, he also has isopods in there. Kind of help keep the tank clean in between uh, total, you know, changes and maintenance and stuff. So, yeah. Moving on, we have my Mexican black king snake. And chances are he's probably going to be under 
Oh, no, actually, um, he's here, so, or he or she, I am, <coughs> sorry. And there's, uh, I'm not too great at sexing snakes yet, but yeah, so this is his little terrarium. Again, I kind of went, wanted to go for like a desert theme, so there's kind of a mix of um, organic soil, sand, eco-earth, kind of all mixed in here. Makes for a really cool look. Again, there's some hydrogen there, which I did take out the mesh layer, so it's kind of all become this homogenous soil mixture. But uh, yeah, he's got lots of little um, succulents in here, um, some piece of mopani wood, some obsidian back there, some more random rocks, some slate back there. But uh, yeah, and so he um, also has this cork hide here where he usually loves to hide under. This tank looks a lot different from his feeding video that I did not too long ago. So, but yeah, so this is him or her. Again, um, I think he's a Mexican black snake hybrid with maybe a cow king or something because he, he's not completely jet black. He has some splotches on him, which I'm okay with. I think it looks kind of cool, but um, he's not that like total, total jet black color, but yeah. Super aggressive feeder, really sweet little snake. He's he's the one who actually bites me the most because as you know, king snakes get really excited when it comes to feeding and they kind of go like, oh my God, I gotta bite anything that comes near me. So yeah, so he's bitten me a few times, but you know, he's still kind of, he's about maybe three foot long. So he doesn't, his bites don't really hurt that much. They do bleed, but again, He's one of my babies, so I don't mind if he bites me every once in a while, but you can see that really cool kind of iridescence that these black snakes get, which is really cool. But yeah, that's him. Cover him up. Again, I just fed them two days, so they're all going to be kind of like trying to go, go to sleep and stuff. <coughs> Sorry, my throat was just super scratchy. But um, down here, I have my baby cow king. Uh, enclosure again wanted to go with like a desert theme tank he does have kind of the uh, same soil that the Mexican black king snake does which is like organic soil sand and eco earth um, yeah so he has some Mopani driftwood some more pieces of obsidian back there random rock lots and lots of succulents in here um, and that are doing you know, surprisingly well. I thought succulents wouldn't grow too well indoors, but these ones are doing great. So I don't know if it's the light I have or what, but fake little skull back there and some cork wood that he's probably hiding underneath here. Maybe, or maybe he's went underground somewhere. Sometimes he likes to hide underneath that rock. I'm not gonna fish him out. Um, you guys have seen him in the video before. But, uh, yeah, oh, actually, he's in that little skull. I don't know if you can see him back there. But he's curled up in that skull right there. Oh, there he is. But, uh, yeah, he's uh, just a baby as well. He's only about maybe a foot, foot and a half long. Um, still growing him out. But, yeah, bio completely bioactive setup as well isopods and springtails in his tank as well as the Mexican black uh, king snakes and uh, again you can also see that I took out the mesh and so the hydrogen has kind of mixed in with the uh, regular soil I actually think it looks pretty cool and I haven't noticed any of my plants suffering because there is no drainage layer so again that's what I would do that worked out for me especially this king snake is a really finicky and flighty <coughs> like snake so you know having to bring him out just to feed him and stuff um he would just get freaked out and stuff so it works a lot better for me like this so um again and the plants are still doing fine there's no mold buildup there's nothing like that there's no step you know um aerobic areas so yeah it works for me but uh yeah that's his tank again that's probably my favorite tank as far as like the decorations and stuff i think it looks really cool now down here is my small five gallon extra plant tank. It looks really crazy in here, but there's, again, just a hodgepodge of different extra plants in here. There's one little snakeskin guppy in here. 
tons of cherry shrimp in here and snails and stuff and there's some rotella, hornwort, lot, tons and tons and tons of java moss, anubias, there's some java fur and narrow leaf, uh, there's some bulbitis in here, right there. Just a hodgepodge of different plants. Again, this is just my extra little shrimp breeding tank and um, yeah, it just holds my extra plants. Really, really low maintenance. Um, but yeah, I just have it in there so that way when I need plants for like a rescape or something, I always have them and I don't have to buy more. Oh, and here's a little tip for you guys. You know how a lot of people use colanders to add water back into tanks? Well, if you guys have these little um, plant, I guess, pots that aquatic plants come in, you can put them in the tank like that and you can add water to that and that won't disperse any of the, the sand and stuff and it was free or I mean, free with the plant purchase. So yeah, um, a lot of people don't realize that for nano tanks and stuff, this is a great tool. Um, again, a little quick tip there for you. But yeah, down here, you probably won't be able to see anything. Um, this is my uh, red rump, Mexican red rump tarantula, adult female. You can kind of see her legs there. Again, didn't think you'd be able to see her because she hardly comes out right now. But yeah, that's her little, little tiny, like two gallon terrarium. Uh, she's doing really good. Have, I've had her ever since she was like the size of a, a dime. So now she's probably maybe, you know, this big. Um, but yeah, she's doing really well in here. I need to probably clean up a little bit in there. So don't judge. Uh, but yeah. So that's as far as the rack goes. That's all that's on here. <clears throat> Sorry, it's a, a mess right now, but yeah, and in here, this originally had my crested gecko, but um, the crested gecko ended up passing away. I don't know what happened um, exactly, but he did. Um, it was really sad, uh, but you know, I, I waited about a year and got this little guy, which he's a giant Madagascar day gecko. He's really feisty and really fat. He's always begging for food. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, sorry, again, my throat's like just really bothering me. Um, but in his tank, I'm not gonna open the door cause he'll come coming out. He's not handleable, um, so I don't try to or anything, but this is his little terrarium in here. He's got some lots of lots and lots of live plants. He's got a little basking spot there. Um, yeah, and some air plants back there, which those actually flowered, which was really cool. But, um, yeah, you can kind of see him with his little double chin there. <laughs> He's really cute. Again, really feisty, though. Like, I don't like to handle him because he, he kind of does that little bark that they do. Like, the little, like, rawr, rawr. let's see if we can, no, I don't want to egg him on. But, um... Yeah, that's him in his little tank. He could probably do with a bigger um, terrarium, to be honest, but this is all I have room for right now, and uh, he seems to be doing well. Again, he's really happy and happy as a clam, and so, yeah, he's kind of the first one that got me into, or this tank is actually the first tank that got me into bioactive setups, which I then kind of, you know, made adapted for my snake enclosures so but yeah that his was the original bioactive setup and yeah so that's his tank again sorry about the messy glass and stuff i just want to give you guys a quick update and then right next to all those is my little 10 gallon which i just filmed a video on the other day and as you can see they're all doing really well let's see if we can feed them so you can guys can see them kind of getting all excited. I do feed them this mix of, sorry my cam or my camera cut out again, but I do feed them this mix of fluval bug bites, omega-1 color pellets, and new life spectrum. I kind of just mix it in here so they get a really varied diet. Um, I give them about this maybe two to three times a week. Um, but yeah, let's see them. They're gonna go, they always go bonkers for it. 
<clears throat> and you can see there's just different particles in there for all the fish, even the little bumblebee gobies that a lot of people say that they have trouble getting them to eat dried food. You can see that little one at the top getting some. Again, my bumblebee gobies actually really, really like dry food, so um, either I'm lucky because of that or what, but. <clears throat> and you can see how much of a pig's the Amano shrimp are, again, you can see they kind of hang from the Sylvanian duckweed on the top and search for the little pellets up there. They're such, seriously such pigs when it comes to food. That's why I don't recommend having them with cherry shrimp and stuff because they'll literally take all the food from the, the cherry shrimp and smaller shrimp. <clears throat> but yeah, you can see them zipping around there looking for the food. But yeah, I'll give them a little bit more food, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a feeding video. Those two bumblebee guppies are really cute, really personable. But yeah, the tank's doing really well. Now, again, same setup as the video that you saw a couple, you know, a couple weeks ago. But uh, yeah, not much as far as that. And a lot of you might be wondering if I still keep carnivorous plants, and I do. I have this, um, uh, I think Nepenthes alata, I think. It might be a hybrid between uh, vin uh, Ventricosa, I think. Sorry, I'm not really well versed in carnivorous plants anymore, or as much as I used to be, but I think this is Nepenthes alata. Kind of doing okay. It's not getting as much light as it maybe should, but yeah, that's just an orchid down there. I used to have a lot more Nepenthes, but it was just really hard because in the summertime, in order to give them as much light as possible. I had to open it up in the summertime in Palm Springs here is like 120 degrees outside so leaving that window open would just let all that heat in here and it would just get so hot so I kind of got rid of them. I do have some Venus flytraps and Saracenias still outside but I'm not going to show you that because they're dormant right now. Um, but yeah that's all the carnivorous plants I have right now. I do have another Nepenthes in his aquarium, or terrarium back there, but no pictures on it right now. Um, hoping it's doing okay in there. It's grown a lot, so it must be growing, but must not be picture time for it right now. But um, yeah, that's pretty much a little update of, as far as my rack system, my snakes, my reptiles, and my invertebrates go right now. This is all that I have right now, um, my little day gecko over there in my fish tank. Um, I'm getting ready to move so that's why a lot of this stuff is kind of messy and everything. I'm going to get my own apartment soon uh, which is really exciting. I'm going to be moving to the Seattle area and taking all these guys with me hopefully um, but we'll see. But uh, yeah again if you guys have any particular videos that you want to see um, on my channel like again maybe setting up a bioactive desert um, terrarium or something like that, let me know in the comments below. I'm always down there answering questions and deleting trolls comments and stuff and so I'm, I always read the comments. You guys are really awesome. Um, again, thanks for all your support. Um, please leave a like or, you know, again, any comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos because I'm really trying to pump out and put a lot more time to my videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be more things coming. I'm getting some more reptiles once I move. So if you don't want to miss out on that, stay tuned. And until next time.